What's up, YouTube? Have you ever wondered about building shapes in Affinity Designer? Well, that's what we are here to talk about today. Welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm Ben Nielsen and I'm a media design educator. If you're into videos about design, don't forget to go ahead and hit subscribe down below. Today we're going to be talking all about how we build shapes in Affinity Designer. Now, one of the things with Affinity Designer, which is an alternative to Adobe Illustrator, meaning it is a vector editing app, is that it doesn't have the Shape Builder tool, which many people have come to know and love since it was introduced to Adobe Illustrator. But it does have Pathfinder tools, as they're called in other applications, but they call them geometry tools. And so we're going to be looking at those today. This can allow you to do virtually anything that you can do with the Shape Builder tool. It might just be a little bit less intuitive at first. So we're going to dive in and see what all the options are. And you might find that in some instances, you even like working this way better. So let's go ahead and look at Affinity Designer. I'm going to be using the iMac today, but these features are also available on the iPad version of Affinity Designer. Okay, now here we are in Affinity Designer. So let's go ahead and take a look at the shape building tools that are available to us. Like I said, this is not a shape builder tool in the sense that Illustrator has a shape builder tool, but it does do many of the same things. These are really operations that you perform on shapes. So what you want to do here is come along and you want to select at least two objects. So I'm just going to click and drag over these first two circles. And first, we're just going to look at what each of these operations does, and then we'll look more into how we would actually use them. The geometry tools, as they're called, are actually found up here in the top right. So there are these little set of blue icons right here, and there are five of them, five different things that you can do when you have shapes selected. So the first one that we're going to do is actually called the add. And sometimes you'll hear this referred to as merge in different places, but it's basically just going to bring those two shapes together. So you can see now instead of two separate circles, we have one shape that's made out of the circles. All right, let's go on ahead to the next one. Click and drag over those two. The next one is going to be subtract. So this is going to do exactly what you would think. It's going to subtract one shape from the other. It's really important on subtract though to know that the top shape is going to be subtracted from the bottom shape. So let's go ahead and see what this does. So you really have to think about your order over here in your layers panel to make sure that you're going to get the right shape. So now we have kind of this moon shape. All right, let's move on to the next one. Select over all of these. And this one is called intersect. So it's going to get rid of the parts that aren't overlapping and keep only the parts that do overlap. So in this case, we're going to get this leaf shape right here. And that's the intersect. This next one is called the X or, and basically it's going to do the opposite of intersect. And it can be kind of hard to see this at first, but once we add a fill in, you'll be able to see it fine. So let's go ahead and click it. It's made a new shape. They're now one shape. Let's go to our color and let's just swap our fill in our stroke. And now you can see that what we have is no shape where the leaf was. And then we've got these two crescent shapes on either side. So that's what the X or does. And lastly, what we have here is called the divide. Okay, so this is just going to split them all apart. So what we have here is instead of either the leaf shape or the crescent shapes, we have all three. We have two crescents and this leaf shape. So those are basically the five geometry operations that exist in Affinity Designer, and you can use those five operations to create virtually any shape that you might want. There's one other thing that I want to show you here though. Let me just go ahead and get two more circles. And if I select both of these circles, and then while I hold down Option, I hit one of these buttons, it's going to do what's called creating a compound shape. So when I click Add, you'll see that I now have a compound shape in my Layers panel right here. And I can open that up and I can see I still have these two circles and you can even see the operation that I've done on them right here. And this is really cool because it's non-destructive. So I can come in and I can select one of these circles and I can actually move it independent while still maintaining the Add operation. So if I want it to be a little bit bigger, I can do that. If I want to come in here and I want to make it smaller again, I can do that as well. But I could also reposition it. Say I wanted that one on top. I can do that. So that's really cool. But the other really cool thing is that you can change the operation after. So I can come here to where it has the add operation and I can actually change that to a subtract, an intersect, or an XOR. Now, remember, you have to hold down Option and click in order to do this non-destructively. Now, this is pretty cool, but it is important to note that the divide is not here. So the divide operation, because it's actually making separate shapes from all the individual shapes, is not here. 
you can't use the divide non-destructively. Okay, so those are the five operations. Honestly, the ones you will use most often are probably add and subtract. Those ones get used all the time. And then after that, probably intersect because you can create some unique shapes that way. I don't use the X or or the divide as often as I do those first three. But let's go ahead and just take a look at a few examples of this. So here on this artboard, I have something set up. Now the first one is really simple. I wanna create a three curve cloud here. So I have three circles all lined up together. And I'm just going to use the add command to do that. And now I just have a very simple little cloud object here. So you can see how taking simple shapes, you can create more complex shapes and they can gradually get more and more complex. Another simple add one, this one over here, I'm going to make a tree and I just used the cloud shape and then the trapezoid shape to create this. And of course, if I come here, hold on option and click add, this is a great example where I might wanna do something non-destructively because say I wanna readjust the top of my tree here. I might want it to come further down or be taller. But this is a great option for being able to adjust that later. So I can move my trapezoid independent and just have more control over how my shape is gonna look in the future. And you can see I'm using some interesting shapes here. So there's this cloud shape and there's this double star shape here that I have here that we're going to use next. There are lots of shapes in Affinity. If you come right here, there are lots of pre-made shapes already, which is a big advantage over Adobe Illustrator in that you have a lot more shapes to choose from to start out with. All right, let's go ahead. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to take this double star and we just want to cut it in half so that we get kind of this crystal structure. So let's go ahead and select our double star and our rectangle. And we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to choose intersect. So when we choose intersect, we get that there. Now we could have chosen divide and we still would have gotten this shape, but we don't need the halves of the rectangle. So it's easier to just choose intersect. So now I've got kind of this crystal shape. Now let's move on to something that's a little bit more complicated. You really use these shaping tools a lot when you're doing things like icons or logo design. And so now we're just going to pretend we're making a teddy bear icon. And so we've got a lot of shapes here that we've laid out and we're just going to start by adding them together, the ones that we need. This will be a single color icon. So we need to have everything either be black or white, right? It either needs to be positive or negative space. First, we'll add the main parts together. Then we'll subtract the parts that we want to be white. And then we'll add a fill to it so we can see the whole thing. So we'll click add here. And then we'll add in the arms and the feet. And so when you're doing something more complex, you really have to kind of think ahead in what you're doing. So now I want to subtract from this all of these other objects. So we can grab this and you can see it's on top here. So let me show you what happens if I try and subtract this eye while it's on top. Something very strange happens because it's trying to subtract something bigger from something smaller. Let's hit Command Z. Now we wanna go ahead and make sure that we take our bear shape all the way to the very bottom of our stack. Then if we subtract, that's now gone. You can't tell that because we don't have a fill yet, but it's gone. So we can just keep doing this. We can subtract these. We can subtract more than one thing at a time as long as they're on top of each other. So let's go ahead and drag our object back down to the bottom. It will kind of bounce up depending on where the object that you are subtracting is in the stack. And I wanna show you what happens here when we try to subtract something that has no fill. So these are strokes here. And if I try to subtract them, it just kind of disappears, nothing happens. And so if you're working with strokes and you wanna be able to subtract this stroke itself there, you actually want to go ahead and expand that stroke. So in order to do that, go up to the top, go to the layer menu. You can't see where mine says layer because of how it screen records, but when you get to the layer menu, you're going to go to expand stroke. And now that's gonna become a solid object. And then we'll do that to this next one as well. Layer menu, expand stroke. Okay, so now that we have those, we can go ahead and select our main object both of these and choose subtract. And because we're using a stroke on that, it looks a little funny right now, but don't worry, it will all look fine in a second. So let's go ahead and we're just going to subtract the feet now. So let's make sure that our object is all the way on the bottom. That's just something you have to keep doing when you're subtracting. Select each of these circles. We can do this all at once. And then we'll go ahead and subtract. Okay, so now we've got just the one object. So let's go ahead and see what we've done here by flipping our fill and our stroke. 
And now you can see that we've made our little teddy bear icon and we have these subtractions here to create the negative space there. And so that's a little bit more complicated, but obviously you can go much, much more complicated with building shapes. When you're working on logos or complex icons, this is your best friend. Now, this does not work exactly like the Shape Builder tool, but the Shape Builder tool in Illustrator is essentially doing add and subtract operations over and over and over again. And one of the benefits to the way we're doing it here is we do have the option to do some of those non-destructive edits so that we can adjust things later if we want to. So remember that's just holding down an option and clicking on it. And that's something that you can't really do with the Shape Builder tool. So there's just some different ways of going about the same thing. All right, there it is. I hope that you enjoyed learning how to build shapes in Fiend Designer today. If you did, go ahead and hit like. And if you like videos like this one, go ahead and hit subscribe as well. If there's other things that you'd like to learn to do in a Fiend Designer or if any photo or any publisher or any of the other apps that I use, go ahead and leave that in a comment below. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.